Um, I actually decided to do five problems from 8.6 radical expressions and rational exponents. We were going back and forth between radicals and rational or fraction exponents and then also simplifying them. And um, they're kind of short. There's quite a few different things that can happen. And then with people on the FBLA field trip, I thought I'd do several today. So 37, we are just asked to simplify. And so what we have done so far is split these up into each of their own separate radicals. So third root of 56 multiplied by the cubed root of x to the ninth. And we're gonna try to um, simplify each one of those separately. So third root means I need to multiply something three times, some number by itself three times to equal 56, and there's not a number that works for that. So we have to simplify this like we did long ago with square roots. When we were working with square roots, we found a perfect square that we could split this up into. Since it's a third root though, we need a cube. So we need a perfect cube that goes into 56. And um, so start going through factors of 56 and see if any of them can um, have a cube that comes out as an integer. And 56 is 8 times 7. 8 is a perfect cube. I can take the third root of 8. So I'm going to split this up into, and I'm showing all my steps here this time to try to help those um, who are confused or have been absent. I can't forget about this one. The cubed root of x to the ninth. So a number that I can multiply by itself three times to get eight is two. There's nothing I can multiply by itself three times to get seven, and seven doesn't break down its prime, it doesn't break down any further, so I'm gonna have to leave that one in a radical. There's nothing else I can do to simplify that. When we come over here to the variable, x to the ninth, nine divided by three, power divided by root is three. It comes out to be a whole number or an integer, so that comes out of the root, x to the third, nine divided by three is three. And then this cubed root of seven has to stay inside the radical. It cannot be simplified any further. 39 also asks us to simplify. Um, I could simplify each one of these separately and then combine them, but then I would have to check to see if I could simplify it again. So they have the um, same base, same root, I'm going to combine them into a single radical first. So the fifth root of, combine these together, x to the seventh times x to the sixth. Then if you would like to skip writing that step and go directly to the fifth root of x to the 13, you can go directly from here to here. So now, um, in order for it to come outside, I have to be able to divide it by 5 and have it come out evenly. Well, 13 divided by 5 is not an integer. It doesn't, it's not a whole number. So I'm going to split this x to the 13th up into something that's divisible by 5, the biggest number that's divisible by 5. Um, the biggest number divisible by 5 would be 10. How many more are there? There were x to the 13th. Here's 10 of them, I need three more. So I can split these, if you wanna write them separately, we can split these up. For the first one then, power divided by root, 10 divided by five is two. So this simplifies to x squared out of the radical. 3 divided by 5 is a decimal or a fraction. That cannot be simplified any further. So I'm going to leave that in the radical. Um, the next three involve simplifying, but also going back and forth, writing it um, between exponential form and radical form. So 42 is written with a rational exponent right now. We need to change it into radical form. So it's a root. The base 216 goes on the inside. 
Now you have a two and a three for the exponent we need to decide. One of them is the root, one of them is the exponent. So remember, it's power over root. It's always power over root. Two is the exponent, three is the root. It's easier to do if you take the root first. So a number that I can multiply three times to get 216. 216 is an even number, so if you're going to do guess and check, start with some evens like 2 and 4. Um, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That's not nearly big enough. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Still doesn't work. This one ends up being 6. 6 times 6 is 36 times 6 again is 216. So this is 6, and then I still have to square it. 6 squared is... 36. So it's a two-part problem. They want you to rewrite it with a radical. That's this part right here. And then simplify it. It simplifies to 36. Number 46 is just changing it into um, a rational exponent. So negative 8. The number inside the radical is the base. And then the exponent power over root. So 4 over 5 for the exponent. And 53 I put in there because, partly because it has a negative exponent, partly because um, you have to distribute that exponent through. So if you have a product or a quotient in parentheses with an exponent outside, that exponent gets distributed to both of them. So we get 49 to the negative 1 half and 81 to the negative 1 half. So we have negative exponents, which we are not supposed to have. To um, change them, to make them positive, we move them across the division sign. So this 81 is going to move up to the top. The 81 doesn't change signs, just the exponent. So 81 goes to the top and becomes positive 1 half power. The 49 with the negative exponent, to change that to a positive exponent, I have to move it. If it's on the top now, when it moves, it goes down to the bottom, to the positive one half. So it's probably easier to simplify these if you write them as radicals. One half, one is the exponent, two is the root. So it's the square root of 81 to the first. And on the bottom, power over root, so 49. Second root, first power. Power over root. So the power is 1, the root is 2. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 49 is 7. And 9 over 7 cannot be reduced any further.